in later. Oh, this will be the code. So you make a motion. Oh, go ahead. You I go. motion that we meet on the first and third Thursdays of every month at Se 7 o'clock. 7 yeah. to 9? Uh, starting at 7. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, so now we got that out of the way. So Gabriel made this nice list. Should we talk about the nice yeah. list? Yeah, so first we <laughs> want to check on the, David, did you put this on here, review the FY18 budget and priorities? Right, which is what that list is all okay, about. Okay, so that is, got it. Yeah, uh, so to catch Terry up again, I made, th this is the list that was circulated by the select board for the select board members and if anybody would spend time as well to prioritize the big areas that they saw opportunities for the next year or beyond really. Um, I just kind of spruce it up a little bit in terms of uh, formatting, but didn't change any language whatsoever. Um, so I thought that we could have a substantive conversation about as a committee, kind of where we want to come down on these. Um, we're certainly all entitled to you know, our own rankings and things, but I thought it would be strong if we could approach the select board and especially for the tri board meeting and kind of have some kind of consensus as a committee on what to prioritize. So has everyone gotten a chance to look over this list when it was first circulated? I did look at it and I, yeah. and I put my rankings on, but I have a question about um, starting with public safety here. Um, so when, before town meeting, everyone was all uh, concerned, I think everyone on this board was concerned with the staffing of the fire department, right? And that was, that's one of my sort of high, highest priorities. Um, but what's recently been happening in the select board meetings is that now there's discussion about where the fire substation is going to go because there's a problem with building on the original site and now they're thinking about this other piece of property which they might buy, which mm -hmm. was a surprise to me because in the last budget I didn't see any money for buying property. There isn't. <laughs> They already failed once. Why did they say they can't be built where it is now? Because they having they what's the name of that test that they did? The that geo tech uh, test revealed that there was spill there that uh, doesn't provide a uh, firm enough foundation for the building. So, so in other words, it would sink. So they'd have to do. So uh, they can't bring any in. I'm sorry. They can't let Paul fill in, make it so it's wonderful. Uh, yes, they can. They can do it, but that comes at a. a Cost that they haven't budgeted for. Yeah, like half a million dollars. Kind of like the senior center. That's another one that <laughs> that's going way over the, budget. The geotech at the senior center is just fine. It's just a no, no, but they're, the building Money. keeps getting smaller because of they keep. Yeah. 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 So that's an issue as well. Really, yeah. you know, that kind of shocks me considering that a, I don't know if you even worked for the town years ago when there was that lead paint issue there and they did all kinds of testing. You're talking about the you know, Cathay Road problem? Yeah, so it's just kind of like they didn't know that then, you know what I mean? Like from all those <coughs> test things that they had done prior that they didn't have that information before they started looking into building there. Yeah, it's not a lead paint issue. No, I know it's not a lead paint issue. What I'm saying is they did multiple testing for different things, and that wasn't one of them, I guess. I guess so. I wasn't here then. Just sat right. in the middle I of the baseball saying, field, I don't right? I think you were here. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, but then again, maybe they were focused, where they focused on the building, and that's where the ball field is. Who knows? Yeah. I have no, you know, I don't know how anybody thinks. So. Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing I heard was it were the cost I think it was the p same piece of property that mm. they're interested in, if I'm right, that, that we voted on before and that, that didn't, uh, through town meeting, that didn't pass. Mm -hmm. But now it's cheaper. Am I right, David? Well, is it up for sale again? Because we have right mm -hmm. of first refusal on it for Correct. some reason? Correct. It's up for sale, uh, Chapter 61A land. So we have right of first refusal. What does that mean, Chapter 61? Uh, it's protected farmland and it's for a tax break. And so they pay less taxes. We was a promise that they uh, that they would uh, keep it in farmland. Uh, well, time out. If we put a fire station on it, it's not farmland. It's that's a fire true. station. That's correct. They're going to take it out of Chapter sixty one A. Isn't there a cost for which that? Which triggers our right of first refusal. We have one hundred and twenty days to exercise.
that by the first refusal. Okay, so let me ask the question. If they take it out of that tax spot, do they have to pay all the back taxes for all the years they got a tax hit? For five years or back, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For only five years. So if yeah. they had it for 20 years, yeah. and then they, then they can elect to roll it back and they only have to pay five years of back taxes? Well, there's a lot of savings. That seems a bit like a racket. Not really, because when they put it in there, those people only they get a chunk of money. No, right? They get they get a tax break. So they don't get any. That's a different program. That's the ACI. Okay, program. That's there you that's go. That's, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> that's permanent <laughs> protection, so they mm-hmm. would not be able to develop that. Mm. If it was APR land, we 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 would not have the option of buying it. We would not have the option if we did buy it of, of putting a fire station on or any other structure. But so so anyone who owns a farm could put it under this protected status, go merrily along for twenty generations, and then someone could take decide that they want to take it out, and they only have to pay five years of back taxes. That's the way the, the law is written. Mm-hmm. Okay, hmm. just want to make sure I, I understand it. Yeah, <laughs> seems like. That's uh, a bit of a shell game, that is. Hmm. Where's the farm? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, so we can't step control back for, that, uh, but... For process and everything. Um, so this kind of a topic would obviously come up with the Joint Capital Planning Committee, which mm-hmm. is going to start picking up in July. Yep. I'm the liaison for that. We have a buildings committee. They're working with a select board. What has finance committee's role typically been in large-scale capital projects like this? And... I think we should add it as an item under here, and we should decide on how much we want to be involved in these sorts of things. Well, theoretically, every every large scale capital project comes through the capital planning process, and that you would have a seat at the table there, as well as independently, we were evaluating that project. These two projects came through the, the citizen petition process, so th- we did not see them coming up through the capital plan. They just ap- arrived. Or with enough signatures to place them on the warrant. You all still had the review of those two projects uh, through both the capital plan and the uh, and the uh, uh, finance committee uh, process, but you didn't see them coming. You know, you should have seen these things coming five years out, and we should have been thinking about strategically how do we put it all together, along with all the other capital requests that the town would need to entertain. Just for background, in your opinion, was this a fortuitous opportunity or an oversight in our capital plan of, of what? for these projects for both the school and the fire? <coughs> I think, I'm, and I ask because on the one hand, if it's an oversight in the capital planning, then I would feel you know, the joint capital planning committee should really be yeah. kind of I think reviewing. Its I think plan. one of the things that I've been asking for for many years is for a more robust capital plan uh, that we've been flying blind on a lot of the buildings uh, and uh, I've made the point as strongly as I can for this cycle that we we should be able to see these things coming up we know that we have a highway garage that they they need some sort of treatment Uh, we have the Russell School that needs some sort of treatment we still have the North Hadley Village Hall, which we're either going to do something with or sell or not. We should be seeing these things coming up. Every building has systems. Is the planning board actually moving on those things, or are they not? That'd be the select board. Right now, we, we don't have any plans on them. Every building, let's just take this building, for example. Every building has a system. The roof is one system. The HVAC is a system. The the, uh, the, the electric, electrical panels are a system, the fire suppression is a system. We should have uh, an evaluation of all of those and that should be reflected in the capital plan. We should know whether we're going to be working on the HVAC system or not. And I've been disappointed that the capital plan has not reflected an, an assessment of those uh, systems or the replacement schedule. So it's always an emergency when something fails. That's the whole thing. That's the reason why we have a capital plan is to avoid the number of emergencies. Now, we're really good on equipment. I know I can tell you when the snow plows need to be replaced. I can tell you when uh, the IT stuff needs to be worked on. I can tell you when 
all these other processes, but we're not so good on the buildings. And not just that, I think that we need to really work together with the CPA in some of these buildings, mm -hmm. they could be using some of this money. So when they're thinking about the buildings, let's think about, oh, is, can we keep it historic? Mm -hmm. This way we can use this money. Mm -hmm. Have that thought in the plan. Mm -hmm. So which body, the Joint Capital Planning Committee or the Select Board, really is most hands-on with the capital plan and responsible for it ultimately? I think the Capital Planning Committee is, uh, even though it's created and, and uh, and appointed by the, the select board, it, all, it has representatives from the assessors, from the um, select board, from the finance committee, from the treasurer, town administrator, and an uh, at-large uh, committee member. Uh, they're the ones who really direct the capital planning for the town. Uh, and there should be a seamless tie-in with the financial management of the town uh, for and then from there, what's the approval process once they've developed the plan? Does it go to select board? Does the finance committee in that change? Oh, yeah. No. Every article that's a capital article has uh, finance committee recommendations, select board recommendation. And well, but ultimately, it's the select board. So in the way that we decision. present you know, the omnibus budget to yeah. the town, that's a finance committee and its responsibility. Is the capital plan similar or is that the select boards? It's finance, uh, the it's capital planning committee. So it is capital, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're actually supposed to make a report to the town. Are they? Which we haven't done either. That's something we can also tighten up. I see. Because like North Hadley Hall, but it seems like it's just decaying away to nothing. If you want to sell it, it's hard to sell it if it's in a little pile of sticks. Mm -hmm. No one wants to buy a little pile of sticks. <laughs> So then is, does it make most sense to let these discussions... I think all the buildings have been neglected. It's not just that one. Well, to let these discussions happen in the Joint Capital Planning Committee and then with me as the liaison, the Finance Committee can be plugged in that way and then going through the process rather than it being a, kind of a, a work item for the Finance Committee. Does that make more sense? Yeah, that does. I think the proper communication... And we can run the school committee involved. the same way. Right. As a practical matter, I would disagree. I would okay. say that the Finance Committee should take a much more active role in, the, in capital planning. And the reason why I say that is uh, capital plan sometimes feels like they're getting things at the last minute and then they've only got a very short period of time to make major decisions about big projects. So if you can front load those kinds of decisions mm -hmm. um, before you're really into the crunch time of trying to put the work together a warrant, I think you're going to have a better result at the other end. Who's in the capital planning? So the chair is Jerry Devine. He represents the select board. Not the Kathy, which is still there. No. So uh, uh, Richard Grader represents the assessors. Paul McCretzky is the at-large member. He's a banker, so he's got really good handle on How do you spell McCretzky? Uh, M-O-K-R-Z-E. You can go on the yeah, I'll website find it. and all right, yeah, find yeah. all of that. Yep. Okay. Um, so you have Linda Sanderson as a non-voting member of the committee. we got David Nixon as a non-voting member of the committee. Yep. You have a member of the school committee, and I don't have a name for you right now. And we committee. have Gabriel. Yep. So we have assessors, at large, select board, finance, school are the right, five so voting. The five voting. And then yourself and Linda are not voting. That's right. Okay. So then, with them being appointed by the select board, can you just elaborate more on like where the finance committee really fits in and the oversight with the capital plan if you want us to be more, or if we want to be more involved? Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of wondering in terms of power dynamics and who's responsible for what, how much can we really yeah. well, press our opinions as I it think, were? I think it's close to, to um, so June 30th, the capital plan is going to be updated. Okay, so what does that really mean? It means that... Uh, there's a deadline on June 30th, and on July 1st, I'm chasing departments saying, where the hell is your capital plan? Mm -hmm. But I think that meeting in, 
and July 6th or July 20th, you might want to invite the, have a joint meeting of the Finance Committee and the uh, Capital Planning Committee and as equals talk about what does this look like, uh, what, is the, what is the five year projection, mm -hmm. uh, are you making progress on your capital plan or are you just following farther behind because things that weren't funded from prior years. I mean, I think those kinds of broad stroke of assessments and evaluations, how complete is the plan? Does it, does it cover buildings, which it doesn't right now? Uh, you know, what kind of big projects are coming up that are potentially real difficult uh, to, to afford for a small town? Um, is there some sort of crushing obligation beyond the five years that we need to worry about. I think those kinds of strategic conversations would be very helpful. Do you want to set that up as a liaison? And we'll yeah. take one of those two meetings and do that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have a look at the Molly and the school committee to arrange that. Yeah, that makes okay, sense. That'd be interesting to look yeah. into that. See what the focus is because I, I mean, I really am curious on where the focus is. I mean, I. One of the focuses we've talked about so many times is the DPW and the trailers. Mm -hmm. And where is the focus? And it kind of, with what happened with now the senior center and the sub fire substation, it seems like where's the, I'm not sure where the priorities are anymore. Well, see, I would actually, I mean, I'll, before I jump into that, because that, that reminded me that I wanted, are we done with mm -hmm. capital planning? Are, are we happy with that solution? Sure. Yeah. Um, because I would like to go and see the chief of the fire department and mm -hmm. find out. I hear. I hear different things from different people of what he wants, mm -hmm. and we had him in here one night, and that night he seemed to be really his thing was he wanted more firemen and he needed more firemen. Mm -hmm. But now the topic has switched back to this North Hadley fire substation, and. We can't be wishy-washy if we're going to go to the people and ask for money. Well, we got to know what he actually wants. <laughs> he made it clear that he's, that is a needed thing, but he also needs more firemen. That yeah. station is still needed in North Hadley. He made that clear that that's what he wanted, but he also needs more full-time staffing to get him up to code in... And my understanding was is that it's just the way it fell because mm -hmm. it wasn't necessarily did he need the fire station first. It was just that it was just the timing. They and, the, and, and then the then. town voted because it was up and they were they needed to decide what to do with it. They were looking they they voted to get rid of the North Hadley Hall, so now what are we gonna do with the fire truck? It was a domino effect type of thing. Exactly. And but he does need the extra help. Mm -hmm. All right, well so since then the property that they originally thought they were going to build this substation on is no longer appropriate or is going to cost a lot more money than originally voted on to do because of this compaction problem in the dirt. I think it's two separate issues for his standpoint. Yes, he needs that, but he also needs a full-time staff. So at this point, I think that we have... Are we, aren't we putting the Band-Aid on that North Hadley Hall where we're going to keep the fire truck there for now? Right? Mm -hmm. Didn't we build that up? We're going to build that out so that... It hasn't been done yet. No, but I think it was $5,000? $5,000 when we gave the green light on that. Right. Yeah. So I there's mean, no rush. There's a house there that they can utilize still. Mm -hmm. that, that's right. And his full-time... And when he was talking, what I understand, that the full-time employees that he's looking for are not for that substation. Correct. They're for right here, right? You know, he's well. I guess my point. Volunteers. My point is, um, there's only so much pie, and he's asking for two helpings right now. So I mean, you got all these other things on the list too. That he, he, it, he was not the one who brought the substation no. forward. No, that, that was, was not, not his pie. Him. That's not his pie, though he wants it and needs it. That was not him bringing that forward. He was. Fine, we're content using North Hadley Hall as it is. As it is, you he see, just doesn't want to get rid of his space there. He still feels that the need of a substation in North Hadley. It kind of got pushed on him 
when they decided that they were going to sell North Hadley Hall. Mm -hmm. Then where you're going to ha then you're going to pay somebody else to rent a space to house your fire trucks. Is that logical? None of this is logical. Okay. That's the problem I'm well, having. I'm it's two separate. You should go and if you feel like I, I, you I, didn't understand what he was saying. You should go talk to him and then bring it back to us. But I yeah, think, I'm gonna do in that. my opinion, he made that kind of clear. Mm -hmm. You know, both of them are needed, but they're separate. He doesn't need the full-time, am I wrong? The full-time employees down at the substation, he needs those here. And that substation is needed for... Is it just a storage thing? No, no, they still work out of there. Your uh, the, call the, people. The call people, mm -hmm. call force works out oh, of yeah. there? yeah. They had something in the other, I don't know, about a week ago, I saw heard the trucks going out. So, I mean, they're very active. Because I've heard some rumors that it's simply a storage issue, and I've heard, you know, I hear, I hear lots of different things, and I'm well, trying to figure out what the real thing is. The storage issue is we have a truck that's big, too big to house in our, our uh, locations. So, yes, that's one thing, but there's still a need for that substation. It, I think that was his opinion. He gave all the statistics of how many miles and so forth, right? He mm -hmm. gave all that information. He gave all that information. So mm -hmm. it's just, I just think, in my opinion, you have a town that's growing and you need more than just one. That guy works nonstop. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm all for him getting the four firemen. I think I've been clear on that. Well, I know what you're saying. He wants his pie and eat it too type thing. So well, but it, you know, <laughs> everybody does in this town. Well, that's right, and that's the job of the finance committee to dole out pie. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, there's only so much. It's our job to make a suggestion. Yeah, All right. Okay, so. and there's only so much. When you're talking about money and finances, because what's important to me, first safety has always been important to me. Well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> but what I'm saying, what I feel it is very important, is this building itself. We're getting it running with the IT and maybe a human resource person shared and making things flow much easier and not all on your shoulders it's just like everything's on your shoulders and i think that it's important that we have a support system here mm -hmm. and i don't feel that you have it or all of the other employees so with that said do we want to start going down the list because i consider this list uh less about what we think is most important to fund and more about where we should prioritize our time in the upcoming every other week meetings okay that because makes ultimately as, as much as we might care about all of this we only have the time to talk about i mean you know it's already been almost an hour and i think that when we prioritize which are important to us that we should invite the people that are most involved in that certain topic of course to talk to us i think that's important as well yeah. Be, you know whoever it is on the select board and exactly and having this game plan so we can kind of map out our agenda in the weeks four will allow us to invite them and mm -hmm. you know, arrange right. all that but on, on some of it, like the public safety, now I, all, I think we all feel that it's important um, to spend too much time. I mean, the fire chief is already, I mean, yeah, maybe we can do a little bit more, but I, I've heard him explain it several, several times. Well, I, 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 and, and I mean, but I've been to sit more than, because I've oh, been right. hearing it for a while more. So Exactly. And but, so correct me if the select board is thinking about this differently. I consider this not... So if I was to put, you know, three out of five for this for the fire department, I wouldn't consider that they're not a priority for our funding. I would consider that we've heard enough, we know we we spend enough time talking about it. Sure. It is not a priority for our time right now. Well, we also have to. Mm -hmm. What I think is a priority for our time is is that we want to see that staffed. So we have to figure out where the funding is coming from. Fair enough. Sure. You know, so we don't need to hear why okay, he so, needs it or whatever we need to figure out as we know is 19 is going to be probably a rough year we have to figure out well where can we get this funding okay so right there it says and i've heard this a number of times dispatch explore regionalization has yep. that explore been explored i think you need to hold off on the dispatch and the ambulance a little yeah, bit because not. because the committee is meeting every other week at this point and they have people coming in they're they're looking at okay that so somebody's actually working on it every other week okay yeah I, I attend those meetings every other week okay so that's the thing i was on one of the things i was unsure because i hear i've heard in select board meeting a number of times about dispatch and explore regionalization but i never really heard that anybody actually did any exploring 
So you're telling me someone's actually exploring. Well, with the ambulance, they're asking a lot of the questions with the dispatch and to see what we can do. And there, there are. Okay, yeah. so you're you're working yeah, we, on that. We have a draft RFP ready for yes. that mm -hmm. as well. So going through the uh, list, so, then. Oh, sorry, so to ahead. answer your question, I suppose uh, I think I understand what you're talking about. Is uh, if you wanted to put a couple of things into it, it was like this is in a stable orbit. We got this under control. It's important. But these things are out of control. It's still a little wobbly. I'm not sure the select board are looking at it quite that way. They're talking about what's the most important of the of all these things that are that are out there. What are the most where what's the most weighty? Mm -hmm. Maybe not the nest, mm -hmm. maybe not what's under control. I see. Right, because they're looking for can they give permission to the chief to hire like by fall town meeting. Yeah. So they're looking at this list, what matters most, yeah. not mm -hmm. what demands my most immediate attention. Exactly. I see. Exactly. That's that's the way I see it at this point. And so at this point, public safety would be one. I would think it would be one. One. Also, I put a one here. So I'll keep notes as a committee, we seem to have reached a consensus on what we as a finance committee mm -hmm. think of this. So one for Five. public safety. Mm -hmm. Going down, uh, so fire department and police department staffing, which I think is primarily fire department staffing for us right now. Sounds like right. one. Mm -hmm. So actually, can I ask a quick question? Um, two, was it two select board meetings? Like the entire Hadley Police Department showed up and they uh, asked the select board if they could make that officer a permanent officer or something. They. Or they voted them in? They voted them in. Was that a, an already an FTE that was already approved and in the budget, or did, did that, was that something different? I'm drawing a blank on what you're talking about. I don't remember this. I don't you remember, remember the policeman in here? There was like the a police, half a dozen police policemen in here. Oh, yeah, but sorry, that was more than two meetings ago. That was... No, it could only have been two yeah, or three so meetings that, ago. That's, that's a replacement. That's not an addition. That's so that FTE time. existed. Exactly. They were just getting permission to hire that person. That, right. Right. So okay. we had a resignation. That they're filling up the resignation. Okay. Yeah. So that, that wasn't anything more. That, that was, was just a change addition. of personnel. Yeah. Okay. And did we get any, did any money come back? Did the person who resigned get paid more than the person who was hired? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I'll have to look into it. Okay. Did, um... Oh, I don't want to go off topic. I'll wait to the end. Let's do this. I'm sorry. Sure. No, okay. And then just to clarify, we're talking about weightiness now and what we consider the most important. The most well, important. I can't see not him about if I have priorities. It's about gravitas. I can see you. About gravitas. <laughs> so, uh, fire department, public uh, staffing, we consider it a one. Mm -hmm. So, dispatch, exploring regionalization. Um, That's kind of grouped in with the ambulance. Yeah, I have that grouped in <clears> with <throat> dispatch and ambulance because. Amy just said she's on that, she's yeah, turning the crank on that. But they're not ready. They're, I mean, we're still listening to all the other towns, and and, and we're going to go see what's out there, what so, people can offer us. Really, what would be the only other towns, Amherst and Northampton, right, that they can regionalize with? Well, they're looking to see about private. Oh, okay. So it's not just the town. That's interesting. Yeah. So in terms of potential benefit to the town, kind of would put this at a three in terms of how important I consider it. All right, it's certainly worth pursuing, but compared to getting more firemen. Well, you know. here's the thing with the ambulance. The ambulance is, it's gonna cost, it's not a money maker. It's, it's something that's gonna cost money. Yeah. <laughs> and they've said it over and over again, this costs money. Over time, you hope to break even. Well, and, and Hadley does, Hadley is in a good spot in, in some cases compared to other towns because the people that we have here are ma uh, mainly insured. All the students are insured. We have a good base. So the, so co the, the, co get the collecting of the bills is higher here than in some other towns. But the problem is, it's still because you're funding, you're, you're, you're staffing it all the time. You're, you have to have so many people staffing it. It's still hard to, you know, break even. And would that be, and it would all be under the chief's domain, under the fire chief's domain? That's where some of them go, and that's what they're looking at at some point, but they're also looking to see, you know, you know, there are some, there's some, there's some places that'll do it for free. There's some places that cost money to do it. There's, um, you know, Amherst, we're paying 140000 a year, but the problem is, 
and, and when we're focusing on this, it's not really about the money as much. Yeah, we're gonna have to look at the money, but we're also focusing on the safety. And what happens is what? Amherst is overwhelmed at this point. Oh, right, they're thin, stretched out thin. Stretched out very thin. And, and if we need to get good response, we need to be fast and have the best response here and give the best care as possible. We have some great people on this on this committee. I just listen because these are people that have a lot of knowledge. Um, and so it's amazing that um, we, we had someone from Pioneer Valley, the Pioneer Valley um, Ambulance, the e, um, they came down and talked to us. We had someone from um, Southampton come and talk to us, who's also part of Northampton. So it, it, it's been quite interesting, but it, it's all about the care in, that we're gonna give. And, and, and to see, it, and, and we are looking at the private sector too. So we do realize it's gonna cost money. And, and, and the other thing is, there's differences between, they call it the ALS versus the BLS. So the, uh, you know, where it means um, the, if someone's having a heart attack versus someone that just has a broken leg, <clears throat> you know? So there's so many differences and what can we even offer? Well, if we were to do it ourselves, we can't even offer the, the top rate service because you have to have been in it so long. So it's not something that we're looking at this point to even take on as the town of Hadley right away. So I see this so more it, it, way some, down the road. So, so right. And you have a group of people that are very knowledgeable and, and working work on it. So I don't think that it should be a priority of ours at this no, point. No, I don't think so. I think that we that down the road we would need to present something and, and see where yeah. Right. So that would be on the lower scale. But the dispatch is higher. Well, not necessarily because mm. that's going to be part of it. So sometimes if we can get someone to do it that's, that could help with the dispatch or that could, whether it be someone private using some of our, it, we have a great dispatch area. We have great equipment. We have a good spot. I don't know how we're gonna handle it. Does the current but. dispatch do both fire and police? Any emergency call. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, here's the thing. When, say an ambulance call comes right now and you do it on your cell phone, it goes to the state. The state. Yeah. Then the it goes brings it back to here, but we don't have an ambulance here. Now then it goes over to Amherst, so that call bounces around a lot. So the last thing we want to do is to have calls bouncing all over the place. We're trying to get a good grasp on the the less the quickest response. I have had to use that nine one one several times, and they've been fast. Yeah. on the response time yes it does it goes to the state police and they stay on the line with you until you get somebody in Hadley mm -hmm. so I mean as it's going bing 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 all those people are still on the line with you sure so well it depends what the emergency is if you're having a heart attack you can't afford the bing 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 the police are right there first. They're equipped with AED my husband's stuff was all related to the heart so yeah, yeah they're all on the phone with you until the ambulance gets there but usually police get called first that's why police are equipped with the AEDs because usually they're first on the scene I just think that this these two topics you need to um, push back and, and not worry about as much until you no, can let this committee hand you, you know groups? give you recommendations yeah. okay mm -hmm. so I put a five here for those but just to reiterate we're talking about overall importance not what's pressing right, right. So, um, so in terms of how we feel about this as an overall importance to the town of Hadley, whoever's looking at it or whatever timetable it's on. Or I think safety, the whole thing, safety is number one. Right, so exactly. in terms of dispatch and ambulance. So maybe you should make those. two categories. One that is your original idea of what are we gonna spend our time on? Yeah. And then the other thing would be what is the pr global priority list? And those numbers may be different, like in this particular case, right? Where, okay, it's number one because we're we're really concerned about public safety, but it's. I agree. But, but I think those two are going to be like number five because this other committee hasn't right. done their work yet. So I agree we'll have those two separate lists. I do want to start with the, the overall importance mm -hmm. to keep us on the same board as select board, same page as select board. So that when we go to them at the tri board meeting or next week, whenever, you know, we'll be able to be on the same yeah. page. But I do agree we should have a separate list for what's most pressing for us to work on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which certainly that'd be a five because we're not. Do you do not think that the budget is not pressing to work on? 
that at the end of each year we don't we have to wait until the fall to balance our budget don't you think that's like oh yeah that, that we have to get under wrap but all these things if you don't have funding to fund these things there's a lot of things on this list that impact that though so just starting at the top if you're talking about override options if we're talking about a fall override that would have a huge impact on the budget right exactly so, and i right. think that so, you have to prioritize what is needed so the goal is is that maybe we have to go to the town people to ask for an override to be able to get these things into play right so that's why we're going through this list and saying what's most important then what's most pressing might be a different conversation well i think but, it's all important sure but <laughs> Not everything can be a one, hence the point of... I think that size. you need to focus on what we can do and prioritize what we can do now as it coming up to July 1 before fall meeting. There's no way we're going to get all this done before that. I agree, but I think it's useful to, to have the two lists. So <clears throat> have this list to bring the select board. So oh, I talking, agree. Yeah, I, I agree, but I think we should focus on if we're going to, or even if the select board's thinking about an override for the fall, what in that override, what would be the things that we would want to put into that for right. fall out of this list? Okay, so then starting at the top, I would, I've listed that as a one, because I think it's extremely right. important. Yeah, and I would, I would just say that thinking about an override uh, the select board has been very clear they don't want a one-time band-aid override then that exactly fight. so i think yeah. that's uh, what gabriel is going to is like if you're going to do an override do it once and do it right so what are your priorities within that override I, I yeah think i think i said that so yeah right. I think I'm I, yeah but then just wrapping up dispatch and ambulance in terms of how important we think it is overall they're all dispatch. important, but I don't think we're going to be able to do anything with the ambulance or dispatch between now and the fall. That goes on the what's most pressing. Right. So I'm talking about what's most important. Is the fire department and police department. Okay, so then what about dispatch and ambulance, one through five? Just trying to get our committee aligned on that. I put them in terms of, like, if I'm comparing override options and fire staff, mm -hmm. I put dispatch and ambulance below that, so I put it at threes what I personally put down. Not everything can be a one is my thinking. No, right, absolutely. Right. So then how does the committee feel about dispatch and ambulance one through five, just to get a general sense of it? Well, considering that there's other committees working on it and we've heard that they're like at the beginning of the working, not at the end, mm -hmm. you know, I would put it more towards a four or a five. Mm -hmm. um, only because we're waiting for those folks to mm -hmm. come back and say, okay, well, we thought about it and we did think this, that, and the other Sorry. thing. Not to be yeah. harping on it, but again, not in terms of pressing this, but just an overall importance. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe let, let me, let me well. say, uh, do you endorse the work of the ambulance subcommittee? Yes. All right. Okay. I think that's what we're talking about. You're endorsing their work. You're happy to let them churn away and yeah. then eagerly anticipating their results, which will come in the fullness of time. Mm -hmm. I think that I, I, okay. instead of, is, is, I, are you going to, Gabriel, are you going to go through, you're not doing the sub where it's just, we're just talking about general information. You're going to each and every. I was going line by line. Line yeah, by but line. We, we can do though just by category. That's simple. Because I mean, public safety, we could just use the whole thing as a Right, but safety. I just wanted to make sure we're not talking about public safety one because fire, but not, but we don't care at all about dispatch or ambulance. You're right, that's what I'm trying to avoid. Okay. So. Because okay. there is a number of things on this list, you know, sure. review I, of board stipends or OPEB. <laughs> a big uh, discrepancy in my opinion between importance. Right, yeah. Review of board stipend zero, right? <laughs> you know, just Low, yeah, where OPEB might be much. Well, so if we just said people-related costs was a one, that'd be a bit misleading. Mm -hmm. I think you're looking at, just to say the stipends, I think what they're doing is looking at overall, if we, all these boards what they're getting paid versus if we end up getting a town manager, we wouldn't need all those boards, correct? This comes from a recommendation. They would be advisory this boards. This comes from the recommendation of the uh, of the Department of Revenue that uh, we take away the stipends of the elected officials mm -hmm. who are non-full-time. Uh, that would save something like $25,000 a year. So. Yeah, so I uh, that's what they're talking about, and, okay. and then and then there's the benefits as well for mm -hmm. those and people who still receive them. 
so I and in some cases I do think it's just a, I think it's very important like OPEB because it would save the budget a lot of money <laughs> mm -hmm. it, you know oh, I mean yeah. that's a lot of money we're talking about year after year mm -hmm. especially if you're adding on the benefits mm -hmm. so it is it's a big focus to our to our budget right so in those stipends you know you're saying roughly 25,000 wow I didn't realize it was that high that's because you're only getting a hundred dollars. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We meet more than some of them do when they get paid higher than we do, okay? We're, we're going to meet twice a month. <laughs> did you realize it was that high? 25000 No, I, I did. I knew it. Well, some of them, and that's when not you look through the budget, insurance. some of them get thousands. That's the value of going down the list. We can figure out stuff like this. Well, wow. that's where we can get money, so I think that's important. <laughs> so, we'll get to it. So, starting at the top. And I right, feel like start. that's an, it's almost an easier one to deal with. <laughs> yeah. We so, need money. So, <laughs> so right options. See, I think that's a very high priority in both uh, things we should be concerned about and things we should be working on because I don't see how we get out of the rest of the budget without an override. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so specifically, this is referring to education on our override options as a finance committee and as a tri board. Yeah, well, we need that. That's the works. first. That's the first thing. I think that's do. a very high priority for the town. And is and, what? Say it again. Sorry. So override options referring to specifically educating the boards, finance committee, school committee, and okay. select board, in our options and how we would go about it if right. we were to do something. That is important. Cool. So I one for all of us. I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Override options one, uh, charter, town manager versus administrator discussion follow up. Um, Is you, this you give us a little background? So I, I think we're all a little too new. Well, for I said in a yeah. meeting that oh. any meeting. Yeah, too, I did right? too. Mm -hmm. We had someone come. We had two people someone. come. Yeah, and tell us how their towns. They both town managers, administrators. Yeah, so we had Bill Keegan out of uh, Foxborough and uh, Tim McInerney out of Grafton came. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're on the form of government uh, committee for the Managers Association. Uh, it's a resource that uh, we can tap into for free. They've offered to come back. They talked about the different kinds of uh, government uh, form of government for small towns. So you've got mayor, council, you've got select board, representative town meeting with an administrator or manager. You've got manager council. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are lots of different ways of putting this together. Um, they recommended that you take a year, that you study this. Each, each town will end up with a different structure, the, the, the whatever is right size for Hadley. Uh, but they were also making, they were also uh, springboard. That, the reason why they were here is because we got the January report from the Department of Revenue that said that you should be looking into a change of your form of government, either through bylaw uh, or by charter. And right now we don't have a charter. So uh, that's that's the impetus for that. So, so what's the actual difference between a town manager and a town administrator? Town manager has three powers, which I do not currently want to uh, hire and fire authority. Uh, that also can extend to appointing and not appointing the committees. Uh, the other is that the town manager presents the budget. So right now I present a budget, but it's a recommended budget. Uh, the select board is free to to accept or not accept under a manager form of government it would be my budget mm -hmm. uh, that that would be presented to town meeting with your recommendation for or against uh, the third thing is that the manager has the contract uh, signing authority so the con so the manager signs all the contracts the union contracts all the other vendor contracts and so forth so those are powers that I currently do not have. So that, that streamlines the system even though it takes power away from the select board and the finance committee? Uh, it does and it makes, it makes the, uh, puts the select board in the position of have, being more like a board of directors who make... The, advisory board. Not an advisory, no. they would set the, the policy, the overall strategic vision for the town and the manager would then implement that. And the manager is not an elected position, it's that's a hired by the select board right but contracted for uh, I think a term of three or five years so much like a typical executive director and a board of directors for yeah businesses or yeah other organizations and so if they didn't like it they'd have to work wait three years to make a change no, no the contract usually has some sort of 
uh, dismissal, yeah. dismissal without cause or dismissal with cause uh, section to it. You can get out of anything as long as you pay. Well, but that's, yeah, right. <laughs> you don't want to pay. That's the problem. <laughs> Paying so, is what we have the, that's the hardest thing that we have to do is pay things, right? So then for prioritizing this, the discussion is, do we think this is a worthwhile discussion to be having? <clears throat> Not like whether we favor town manager or town manager, nothing like that. But well, it seems like that's a, more well, of a select board thing. Well, sorry. So in terms of importance to the town, should this discussion be taking place in, at some board and someone should be having it? How do we feel about if it's important? Let me just say that okay. the decision about a charter should not be about the one position. In this case, most people think about town manager or town administrator. It should really talk about the overall structure of the town. Right now you have a very horizontal organization chart which you have in your in your budget materials. Okay, so that means that decision making is diffuse, uh, hard to get things done, hard to get everybody that you need to into the same room together. Uh, if you had a much more vertical organization then whether that be through a manager or a strong select board, whatever. Yeah. I think that I think that really is what you're talking about. I think that it's a lot to do with this organizational chart. And somehow I think a lot of this all is together, such as as the town manager versus administrator, as of the having um, the reviewing board, you know, we could even look at reviewing boards and stipends, maybe, you know, the, some of the committees um, mm -hmm. who, you know, what committees report to who, who does what, commissioners versus mm -hmm. um, non-commissioners, you know, some have commissioners, um, some has trustees, I mean, the whole thing, if we're looking at, the other thing is, and we're talking about, you know, the HR person or the finance person, getting a finance person in here, I think that's all Did should be done towns together. Did the towns have a town manager and a finance person? Yeah, so the town of Amherst, for example, is a good example mm -hmm. of that. So we had uh, John Masanti, and then we had, who was the town manager, now it's Paul Bachman, and you had Sandy Pooler, who's mm -hmm. since moved on to Arlington, uh, who was the financial manager. Another good example would be the town of Concord, where you have Chris Whalen as the town manager, and then until recently, Tony Logalbo was the town finance director, who just there wasn't a number he didn't know you know he was he's retired but uh, mm -hmm. he was he was kind of like the guru of finance directors so his knowledge retired with him mm -hmm. yep <laughs> that's what typically happens <laughs> yeah. so then to put it more broadly do we think that it's worthwhile to have a discussion on the structure of Hadley's government and mm -hmm. possibly recommending changes to it yes and I think that's mm -hmm. how you opened up your conversation with me earlier today, is what is the finance committee supposed to do? Right. Right. I'm trying to figure out what our role is, yeah. mm -hmm. more specifically. Sure. So while we're talking about the structure, can I just ask David something? I'm sure you probably figure I'm going to ask him anyways. Commissioners. How, who do we have left in town for commissioners? You know, Departments. Yeah, you know, the Park and Rec Commission mm -hmm. with three members. Mm -hmm. um, and who's the commissioner, Andy? Andy. You know, the three of them together are commissioners. Oh, okay. Okay, so is that the only department? You have the select board double as water commissioners and sewer commissioners and highway commissioners and police commissioners. I thought we got rid of the sewer commissioners. Or no, the select board. The select board assumed their duties. Yeah, they assume. So yeah. theoretically, we only have Park and Rec left. Uh, historic Commission. Okay. Are they paid? No. Okay. Park and Rec? Yes. Okay. Uh, how, are they paid a lot? Uh, no. Uh, but... No. And okay. some of them are still getting health care, though. That's expensive. I think so, at least one of them is. Yeah. Yes. So my question for them is... <clears throat> What are their roles? What can they do and not do? The Park and Rec Commission? Right. What is their job? All right. So the Park and Rec Commission have broad powers under Massachusetts law when it comes to parks. When they are in a park or when they're managing a park, they have the same powers as select board members. They mm -hmm. can hire and fire. They have contract signing authority. They can... They can hire and fire what? 
personnel. They can? Like coaches. Okay. All right. But how about the general, the coordinator and so forth? Coordinator, I, I, the way I look at it is that that's something that's larger than just parks. Mm -hmm. All right. So that, that's a hire that comes under the select board. Okay. So then who, in, d tell me, uh, who decides the salary for their employees? For the employees, it would be the select, permanent employees would be the select board, and for the temporary uh, employees, it would be the Park and Rec Commission. And where does that say that in the bylaws? It says it in Mass General Law, Chapter 42, Section 6. <laughs> so there. <laughs> <laughs> you got Chapter one. 40 what? 42? 42, Section 6. Okay, so I would like to see that, because I have Chapter 45. Okay. It might be 45 section six. Okay. All right. What's the, um, what are you driving See, at? See, here we go. <laughs> this is my up. issue when I, this is why I feel it's important to relook at the government of the town of Hadley. And this is not personal against anybody, but we're setting a precedence here. Each department sets a precedence and we have employees in the town that see how other departments are working and they don't have a voice to speak or to whom or anybody because that's just the way it is in this department. We don't have an HR person that they can go and talk to. So I wanted to know, we have a park and rec coordinator who makes us such amount of dollars after being here 10 or whatever years. And then your commissioners hire somebody, two commissioners hire somebody bringing them in at $25 an hour. I, want, I had many phone calls from people that already work in the town of Hadley that don't even make that and have specialties. So, Are these and coaches supposed that to, are making 20 No, no, it's an interim person who's going to be interim, meaning Kathy's still there to the end of, what, June, I think? And now we're paying somebody additional $25 an hour to take over her to duties. watch her and learn what she does yes for seven weeks because that's how many it was or whatever. so we're double paying that position for seven weeks yeah and how was that decided upon I don't know I'd like to know that and where did the budget line come from well because they haven't hired their assistant yet and so there's money in their budget but was that money that we were thinking that was going to come back to the town and and help us out in other areas so there's a lot there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. Please so, expound. <laughs> so as I said, the Park and Rec Commission have broad powers when it comes to parks. Well, okay, right, so, so to parks. So yeah. I want to see where it says they can hire fire and, and set the pay scale. You're not, you're not going to find that level of spe specifics in that particular by. Does it level. even give me the idea that they can do that? I don't care about the hiring and firing. It's setting the pay scale. Okay. Really. Here we are trying to figure out finances, and you have two people out of the three after a select board meeting. Let me just read the minutes, okay? Well, actually, I, I'm not going to even read the minutes. I want all of you to go on the, the website and read these minutes, okay? Well, go ahead you and read them. It's only a small paragraph. No, I'm not going to do that. So the other thing is you have employees that we came to us and say, we work two, three extra hours a week that we don't even get paid for. And probably a lot of you do that consistently here. And then you have a commission that goes ahead and does that and makes other employees that work for the town for many years think, how does that work? So the Park and Rec Commission is going to be meeting with the select board on the 14th to hash out this issue. But they already did it, and why do they feel that they have the power to do it if it doesn't state it, in my opinion, in these... I was a Park and Rec Commissioner. I know what my my things... It was there to support the coordinator, okay, to support the coordinator in a activities. We didn't care about getting paid. We were there all the time. It, it just it bothers me because here we are trying to figure out finances and we have departments that are like 
So, so I think question. that goes, I think it was. So, uh, sorry, I'm wondering about the select board meeting that's upcoming. Is the discussion going to be around the decision made and hashing out the appropriateness of it, or the policy and procedure around who actually has? Well, to I would like to know the policy uh, and the what's procedure. The, I also think I think the the entire future of the Park and Rec Commission is going to be some something that people are going to be talking about. Well, because uh, the, the select board meeting, I I've seen them both because I was on vacation. Uh, Molly well, suggested, up. you know, looking at the department as a whole and figuring out what is needed or not needed now, the changes, because here we are, we don't have North Hadley Hall for them to use for space. So are they limited on their programs? I mean, you know, like where, where, where's Park and Rec going, basically? So, and I know that the school this year, uh, the basketball program that, um, our varsity coach usually puts on in the summer had to be canceled because they're doing the floors in the school. So it's hard to make, I mean, schedule programs when you don't know, you don't have any space to do these things in. Where are they? Uh, and then you get to take it away from you. <laughs> so it's like. Where are they having their outdoor things this summer? Do we not know? No, they're having their uh, outdoor soccer programs right at um, Hopkins. They can use the outside, but we can't use the gyms inside. Well, of course, that changes yearly. You know, next year we might be able to use so the I, I gyms think, in I the space. So I think going back to the whole uh, discussion about a charter and what do you want your government to look like and how. The, uh, this is what I'm saying. I feel it's more important to look at the government in if you were to switch and change your government, then right. things would happen differently. And I think you'd have um, happy employees. So I agree, and I placed it pretty high myself. I put it as a two. Mm -hmm. um, behind basically override options because I think that'd be a huge you know change for the, for the town and fire and safety because you know I also saw us pressing so I don't know how other people feel too uh, but I think uh, when you when you look at and, and, and like you said you can't have everything in one but right. when you look at it I think that if we're gonna focus on a two I think it's the whole organizational chart the mm -hmm. whole thing which would then make maybe reviewing the boards and stipends a two, some of these others a two, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I mean, they'd yeah. All stuff be in that's the same similar thing. would be, yeah, right, similar. So I guess to you, were you knowledgeable of that? How I, does it work? I gave the, uh, the Park and Rec Commission my advice. They didn't listen to my advice. Okay, so theoretically that's how it works if you're you have a commission? Well, in, in this particular case, they've got broad powers. I keep on saying that. In the case of the fire chief, he's got, he's got hiring and firing authority because he's a strong chief. We've adopted that section of Mass General Law, making him strong chief. The police chief does not have that kind of authority. I don't mm -hmm. have that kind of authority. Wait, wait. The but police chief can't hire and fire? That's no, the correct. select board does it. Yeah. That's what we saw at the... That's uh, what you but saw. The, but the, chief, the fire chief the fire can chief hire and fire. Because they're both strong chiefs, but they're strong chiefs under different sections of Mass General Law. Fire chief has broader powers than the chief of police over the employees. There's a whole section you can watch it on demand Is on this his what website. You're about? That I watched about right strong thing? chiefs versus not the, strong the chiefs? weak chiefs. Yeah, <laughs> the weak <laughs> chiefs. <laughs> Yes, weak so chiefs. Yes. The press board is because we're at 825. It just seems weird that they so have different... So we're in this, you tell me, you just okay, so quoted I, I think, something I in here. I think we've drilled down to the level of one particular issue that it irks us. Mm -hmm. um, I want to make sure I'm reading it correctly. But you all wanted to make sure that you're using your time wisely. Okay, so that's a good way of avoiding it, but that's good. <laughs> so, so how do we feel about I'll, two? I'll underline yeah. it for you while you talk. Okay, thank you. Right. So how do we feel about a two? Any cases for higher or lower? Two is fine with me. Two is good. Yeah. Okay, so we got charter at two. So Thanks. moving on to people-related costs. So the Hampshire Trust with Joe Shea, my understanding is this would be more for educating us on our position rather than like, do we think the Hampshire Trust is important, right? Uh, David, correct so me if I'm wrong. J he, he's Sorry. highlighting something. Yeah, what? Uh, Hampshire Trust, uh, was this item put on here as uh, similar to override options in terms of how we, important it is to educate ourselves on our position with the Hampshire Trust and our options? That's how I was reading it. 
Is yeah. Hampshire Trust and the COG the same thing? No, they're mm-hmm. two different things. Mm-hmm. So Hampshire Trust, we're having a vote next Wednesday about uh, plan design for the future. Um, I don't know what to say about the Given the uncertainty over the health insurance in general, I'm not sure, sure how highly to re, uh, rate it as something to work on actively. Mm-hmm. If they're voting on it next Wednesday. They're voting we on just options at this oh, point. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Can we invite him to one of our meetings and have him yeah, certainly tell us? Yeah, certainly more about, yeah. yeah. Just so he gives us more knowledge of what it's about? Yeah, because yeah, so I, so I have no idea. I don't have any idea Can I put either. a null by it since... I, th- We're not knowledgeable enough I really think it's high it. importance in terms of paying attention to it. I think it's low importance in terms of rate of return on uh, minutes spent on the issue sure. because it's going to take care of itself one way or the other. Gotcha. So I'll put a null. Once we learn more, we can... And maybe we could reach yeah. out to them to put them on a future agenda. Mm-hmm. Give, have them, give them some dates and see what's good for him. Yeah. So OPEB. With Parker Elmore, um, I assume it's similar. Um, well, that's it why I asked you. Section Section Six. That's the one that we need. Uh, so OPEB, I assume, similar. It's yep. it's not something that we're going to be. It's not a huge project for us to work on. It's just something that is important for us to keep monitoring right. and kind of mm-hmm. be knowledgeable on, not an yeah. action item. So this Parker Elmore, who who is he? He's the guy who is uh, our OPEB uh, manager for the actuarial, I should say. He's the OPEB by actuarial. So he's the guy that every two years runs the numbers and tells us where we stand with respect to our unfunded liability for future costs of health insurance and life insurance for our retirees. Um, the people who run the trust is Bartholomew uh, Investments. And was it Parker that was speaking last night to the select board? Tanya. There was another... There's a bunch of different people. Oh, board. yeah. There was Mike Sarzinski yeah. was here. He's a former representative from the H Cog. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the fellow there was David Eisenthal. He's from Unibank and he's our chief financial advisor. He m- basically works on a, our borrowing for us. Right. So, so, how do people feel about Parker Elmore? Do we want to put him in the same category as Joe Shea or? Do we, you know, in other words, do we want him to come here and talk to us, or is that not appropriate? I feel that down the road, sure, why not listen, but I don't think it's an importance. I would, both of these I'd put down lower. Yeah, I, you're, okay. you're doing really well on OPEB. The, the liability dropped so three by or four? almost 500000 Sure. Mm-hmm. So. I'm happy even with a four. I'd be, yeah, I'd be, yeah. Okay. Four. Uh, so okay. review of board stipends. Uh, so I think this, like, uh, Terry said it works into the charter discussion that we just had mm-hmm. as part of the overall structure of government. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, I mean, one of the things that I noticed when we were flipping through the budget is some people get paid almost nothing, us, and other people get paid a lot, and it's not clear why. <laughs> but notably, when we're talking about board stipends, I think we could carve that off and separate it from the overall discussion on the charter. Right, that. but I think so. we got to get the stipends up higher in the discussion. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. We, we can rank it differently than the charter because this is a, an issue that we could make its own thing if we wanted to just talk about it. Yeah, and so what would be nice to have, David, is a list of all the stipends so we know who's what. Mm-hmm. Right, then we have something Especially to Especially if we at. can save $25,000. Well, I mean, it's, you know, oh. when I was David asked to do this. <laughs> well, he's just collating the data. Yeah. Right. No, um, what you're saying to get rid of, it would put a lot of responsibility <laughs> on him. We need to give him a raise. Well, but I mean, I, so David's being quiet. I would still be on the finance committee whether or not I got the hundred dollars. Oh, granted, I agree with you. So, okay. and for a long time they didn't get the hundred dollars. Am I right? They gave. They gave it back. Yeah. They gave it back. Yeah. Well, I I had to like send my address in, but I never got anything. <laughs> well, no, I asked. <laughs> I actually processed your payment, and uh, I got your email saying where is the damn money. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're asked. And I, and, I, and I said I'd look, follow up on that, so I shall. I mean, well, he just said he, he got an email asking, still haven't seen it, and I well, got my other check. If, passed I, it if, I, if, I, if I fill out oh. an invoice and say, please pay, and that doesn't get paid, then I, for just internal controls, I want to know what happened to the I invoice. think they were waiting for addresses. I sent in my address. I don't know why. Plus, 
All of our addresses are downstairs. Yeah, yeah, we've got. We know where you are. <laughs> Not in a rush, and I trust the money will come. <laughs> so, in terms of how important we think this is to be reviewed, you know, however we feel about to be reviewed. So, I would put that as a two or a three, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. only because I want review of wage study to go up higher than that. Okay, so I'd say three. Okay. So then review of the wage review, study. That, review of board stipends, you're saying three? Is that well, what you're saying? Yeah, because I think review of wage study is much more important than review yeah, of those stipends. Really wage need, study is a much more really need problematic issue, that. like all the stuff you just brought up. Yeah. Well, what I brought up is just that I wanted to know the process, and I didn't get the answer to that, so... Um, but there's lots, I mean, I've had lots the of... The review of the wage study, I am a firm believer of it, yeah. as long as something comes out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I've had people high. come to me and say, well, you know, I've worked at the town X number of million years, and I make less money than, you know, it's some true. other person that was just hired. It's true, though. And that's where we got we got to put our head around that and find out why those balances are like but that. But the wage study is, who is it, UMass that does that? It was uh, UMass uh, contributed to it, but uh, right. what do you mean by wage study? Wage study to me means we look at everyone's all the paid people, people that we pay and figure out who's making what, and then ask the question, why is it set up that way? Yeah, this is this is more of a market condition study rather than a uh, wage study. So no, it uh, says review of wage. I think I think you guys need to dig into it. I think it, yeah. I think it's something that. We keep on trying to do on the fly, and it's not. Uh, it's what would never be the cost you think to hire a company to do that? Uh, a few thousand dollars. To hire a company to do what? An outside resource company that comes in and does the wage study. It yeah. actually meets with each individual employee. They fill out a thing. I just did it in Northampton. Yeah. yeah. You fill out a job. Yeah. What you feel your job thing is, and. You know, and they, they make a report. They yeah. may, and then they talk to the people individually, and they compare to other towns this size yeah. mm -hmm. of what their pay scales are. There's a number of outfits that do, do that. Uh, MRI out of Meredith, New Hampshire, is very well respected. Collins Center out of UMass Boston. Right. So we would need to find money to do that as well, or the cost. I think it's very important, though. I think so. And some of these, if they're not a lot, maybe don't we, we have a small budget in mm -hmm. the finance that I think yeah. maybe we could use. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hearing two? I, 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 I would I, say two. two. Cool. Okay. But I mean, I don't see why we, you know, down the road, the stipends, we can do the same He's thing. He's hell bent on putting a number next to every one of these well, things. Well, <laughs> it's 8.30 and we're like a third okay. way through the list. <laughs> All right, so two for the wage study. So when we talked about fire, dispatch and ambulance, I don't think we ever came to just a hard number. Is it possible to... Well, that's that we have to wait kind of thing. So you want to just mark it as null, we don't know enough to be able to mm -hmm. actively yeah. prioritize it? Okay. You have an active... A one next to the fire department staffing, yep. and then... Dispatch and ambulance, just null. Null. Mm -hmm. okay. Nothing yet. Okay. Um, administrative support, so needs and skill analysis and resource management. So David, you can give us a little more background on yeah, so in the budget uh, that uh, was presented to you, you notice that there were requests for additional hours and additional staffing, which mm -hmm. was not recommended ultimately because there was no needs analysis done. Okay, so taking taking a view of, uh, of all the processes that occur in an, an office, does it really translate into more hours? And if it does, then that's where we need to spend our time. Uh, or does can the work be done with the existing staff? So does this come from ourselves in the select board, from yourself, or from department heads? I think uh, Molly is taking the spearhead on that one. Okay. And when she does something like this, is it on a department by department basis, or yeah. is it like a broad uh, analysis? Uh, you know? I don't want to speak for her because she hasn't given me that, uh, oh, that information. Is she I meeting know. with people this week? She is not. As it turns out, so many people are taking Friday off that they... Uh, that we've rescheduled that for June 23rd at 1 p.m. It's now June 23rd? June 23rd. Is it, can I come to that? Yeah. I just want to sit and listen? Sure. What? Is it a, an open thing or she's? She, she extended the invitation to everybody who wanted to be there. Well, I don't want to speak. I just want to 
hear what everybody else has to say. So that's okay if I just sit in the background and listen. Yeah, why don't you check it in with her? Uh, yeah, I'll send her an email. Right. June 23rd? June 23rd, 1 p.m. where is that going to be? Right here. 1 p.m. 1 p.m.? Yeah. Is there like a list people are signing up? It would show them all in advance who's no, coming? I think it's whoever, whoever wants to show up. So if everybody files in, so that's the uh, that's the day of the tri board meeting in the evening, right? No. This is uh, the day after June twenty third. That yes. would be Friday the twenty third. The twenty second. Twenty second is our meeting. Twenty first is the tri board meeting. Right. And the, and she was having this when? When's uh, Friday the twenty third at one p.m. Here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I can't do anything at one p.m. Well, I'm going to come and take notes. It's so. supposed, supposed to be for the staff. So there's okay. no obligation to be there. Okay. So then, do we want to rank this or just say we don't know enough and we'll wait to just wait for Molly's yeah. report? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So no. Uh, so human resources, short-term, long-term solutions. That's um, important. I agree. Important, like number one important. It goes with the charter, mm -hmm. town manager, That's administrator. Yeah. So then it's a two. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice and easy. Uh, so information technology, same. That's important too. I think that would go with the organizing it. You know who's doing what. I mean, I mean, well, I mean, just as much as human resources, I guess. Well, let me ask a question here. That's because IT, right? IT <laughs> was brought up in select board meeting as in, in terms of when we would ask for an override, we would include the fire department. And IT, and that's right. As one, right? You know, as one thing because they're they only want to go to the people once, mm -hmm. and they want to have a list of things that they need to get squared away, and why we're asking for that. And so, I think that should be ranked the same as the personnel for the fire department. As a one. As a one, because mm -hmm. those are things that would go on. You know, asking for an override to pay a permanent override to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm also wondering on timing, David, a needs analysis, especially if we're shooting for a fall override to include that in, we'd have to get on that like now, or is that, has there already been enough besides the DOR? Well, I think I think we don't have enough time to do everything that we want to do. So yes, you're absolutely right, and we need to be on this right now. And it, it would be more time intensive than HR, you think? Yeah. And figuring out where we're at with IT and how we would for it. If we were to look for an override, right, we would include the public safety, the IT. Are we ready for an override in the fall or maybe not till the spring? I thought that they were going to try to... Are we really ready for the fall? Well, it gets back to why we need to know about our options yeah. and be educated. Right. <laughs> That's why it's yeah, a one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I was hoping the select board would dig into this a little bit more than they did last night, but they had so much on their plate that... Uh, Maybe they, they should they, have an extra meeting. That's what they did for next it's week. It's okay if they have extra meetings. <laughs> 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 they can pay for it. We do. Not first and third. Huh? I'm sorry to yeah, distract so you as well. If IT is going to be harder to really wrap our heads around than human resources, um, I would feel comfortable putting it as a one even. If it's going to be that much work to try and have it ready for the grand override. If there's a grand override, does the school have out. an HR person? So they had Mr. Duffy, who's retired. I don't know if they. He's IT, right? He's not IT. HR. HR. No, I'm sorry. It's uh, getting late in the night. I'm not tracking as well as I should. Uh, no, that's one of the things that we can look into as a sh shared uh, HR position. Right. Yeah. I just think IT is kind of a tougher nut to crack. Well, for, you're not yeah, much I didn't. That. I didn't hear them talk about IT as part of the override. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I heard that. Definitely. I heard it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Right. Because they want to go and ask for a chunk of money and say we need to fix IT because right. you know people's you computers are crap and right. and we need firemen because we don't have any except for one. Right. No, now, we have two. We got two. Did he hire the second no, person? No, we're gonna get. No, we already Not had yet. two. We had two. Now we're gonna get. Now one. we're gonna. Have two. So I would place this as a one just because working in IT, I kind of know it's like. You don't really know what you don't know if you're until looking you to, start digging in. Yeah, for IT specifically, it's so hard right. for if you're not an IT professional to know the extent of what it would be to, to implement something like that. I put IT as a one. Okay. Cool. So one, one for both the needs and the. So the human resource person is important, but I don't think that um, 
I know, we gotta start somewhere. Well, yeah. I think it's not just about IT, about a person. Mm -hmm. I think it's the whole structure of the oh, IT. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, right? totally so, agree. Yeah, it's not yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are we are working with Pioneer Valley Planning Commission on the regional IT support service. So that's HR is more like mm -hmm. a shared uh, a person. Yeah. Right. Right. So I think it's it's very important, and we are actually taking a couple steps to make it happen. Yeah, because there's capital and mm -hmm. infrastructure goes into it. It's how about free. this? If we were to hire a human resource person, can we just look into how much the average each our person would make. Sure. So, I mean, I think that's something I can do. Right? Yeah, yeah no, no one stops you from doing anything. Well, I'm just saying if, if that's, I think that's very important on the list, in my opinion, they, our employees here, whether they're voted in employees or mm -hmm. appointed by the select board, they have somebody to Who's doing it now? Too. Like who's who maintains like the network here? So the HR administration is done by Joan. Oh, you're talking about the IT, IT now. Yeah. IT right now. Uh, that's done. We vendored that out to Paragus. Okay. And so I, I agree with your sentiment. It'd be good for us to make a recommendation on the finances of the human resources yes. person, right? The select board would obviously oversee like the type and responsibilities and the roles for the person exactly. and whatnot. But having a sense of how much it'll impact the budget. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Perfectly appropriate for us. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, town administration that. finance, the Commonwealth Compact Report. Um, so this reading it over, it seemed to, I mean, it touches on IT and resources, you know, the, the charter and everything. So when thinking about this as a separate category, what was the thinking? Well, I think that the finance director was the thing that we were talking about uh, uh, coming out of the uh, out of the. Uh, the DOR report from January. Um, we have all, you know, if you think back to the fall town meeting, we had that chart saying that we're going to be raising the tax rate up by $95, not the tax rate, but the tax burden mm -hmm. by $95. You know, that's a, that's a project that David Eisenthal, Linda Sanderson, and I worked collaboratively on, but uh, that took us off of all of the other responsibilities that we have. And would it be better to have somebody who could look at the big picture and the small picture uh, all the time, a dedicated person for that purpose? Okay. So this line was specifically intended for more of a finance director position no, yeah. as recommended by the Commonwealth Compact Report. Right, right. Okay. Do we even know if it's valid? I don't know. This appeared in my email. I'm assuming this was from John Allen, correct? His figures and how he came up with the $95 figure. So, town, this this is just we're talking about the town, um, the finance director. Yes, yeah, I'm just the so finance I would, director. So, I would chart, I would um, value them the same as the charter. As a part of the overall mm -hmm. structure of the government, yeah. All right, so this is not. So, a one? A two. A two. Yep. This is this is unsigned, and I I don't know who it's from or what it represents. It was in my email. John Allen sent that around. I think he just did a back of the envelope calculation, and I have no idea if those numbers are valid or anything, but yeah. or where he even drew them from. Yeah, it could be all whole cloth. It could be true. It could be. Uh, it could be that part of the cloth where the hole isn't. <laughs> that actually I, came to my personal email. So it's not from me. I know it's not let's, from you. Let's put it that way. I have a little smiley face next to your stuff. <laughs> so DOR report. Um, I do. He makes me laugh. <laughs> what was the thinking behind this line? <laughs> stuff becomes up. Right. Sorry. So DOR, for the DOR report, what, what was DOR? the specific? The Department of Revenue. Uh, uh, yeah. So interest item. So we get on arrival. Whether, I don't know. Give me that too. Whether we should uh, whether we should look into a, a financial director or not, this is something that we've been talking about for years. Mm -hmm. Similar, so this is the same essentially as the Commonwealth Compact Report. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a two because it's kind of the same thing. Uh, so audit report slash management letter. Okay, and I just sent that to you in tonight's email, so you will have that. So the FY sixteen audit, you um, you will have that uh, in your email. 
Tanya Campbell from Lentz and Heath gave a presentation about it, talked about the healthy state of your reserves as of 16. Yeah, so time out. I was here yesterday for that report. Yeah. yeah. And I don't consider five minutes glossing over something a report. Right. So she's giving a presentation on the report. So the report itself is 61 pages. Would you like a copy of it? I yeah, haven't. Yeah, I like, oh, just got it today, today though. Yeah, so. you all. I had hoped that the that the final version of that report would have been available for last night, but it didn't come in until today. So, but I have forwarded it on to you all. So it would be worth reading it. through and with 61 pages to do our due diligence and read through. And if we want to call him in, if we have really specific concerns or bring yeah. it up to select board or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. What I see is directly part of the finance committee's responsibilities, right? And then the there's, well -being of the town. there's the management letter also, which is one of the reasons why we do these uh, these audits. We're required by law to do an annual audit because we have borrowing, but we don't necessarily have to do a management letter. We selected Melanson and Heath because they do management letters, and that's something that's important to us to have them tell us not the million things that we're doing right, but what are the five or six things that we need to improve? Uh, and hopefully we've been able to improve. And you're confident in that ratio. <laughs> <laughs> it's worked out so far. Okay. So I'd say this is a four, just because it's similar. It's something like OPEB or Hampshire Trust. We should be looking at it and keeping up on it, but nothing that I've heard indicates it's pressing issues. I don't think we have any yeah. fives yet. Well, once we read it, we may find out this more pressing yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. Line. I mean, yeah. if you see something in the, the numbers that looks dodgy, then definitely. You just sent this to us in an email? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. we just right yeah. before you got here. So you put a null the through it then? Just not applicable null for now? Yeah, I would say no. Cool. Um, okay, planning is your next one. Thank you. Uh, so, planning. <laughs> That's high. Long term solutions. Um, so, what is this in reference to? Who's yeah. planning and what? Best Isn't that capital planning that we're talking about? Well, no, that, that goes back to the five-year strategic plan that, oh. that uh, the town is supposed to be putting together. So where do you want the town to be in five years? So that, that I think it should be right here in Tadley in five well. years. <laughs> so we should work on that because we need a plan, a financial plan for five years. Because just doing it in an emergency situation for... You know, getting it done the night before town meeting is really upsetting to me. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see mm -hmm. a more global plan that we're not chasing our tails five minutes before town meeting all the time. That works for me. So that should be much higher. It's that should be like a one. It's <laughs> not always that easy. Well, I know, but you can at least make an effort. Absolutely. I agree with you. And by putting a one next to it, we're indicating that we're making an effort. The long-term solution, yeah. absolutely one. Okay, I agree. One. So then the other stuff, other other stuff that Just already gives other. you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's listed up. Uh, opportunities for consolidation and outsourcing. What specifically was this referencing besides kind of overall structure stuff we've been talking about? All the things like IT and ambulance and. Well, the. the, the you, you can outsource too, but you can also insource. Okay, so one of the things that we talked about was uh, the assessors. Um, can they be doing the assessing for some of, of the smaller towns around here? Could this be a money maker for us? Um, you know, Amherst does this for some of the other small towns that abut them. Uh, what abuts us? That We'd be interested well, in we don't we don't need to think in terms of geography. We can oh. think about okay, so where is the need out there? Particularly when you have the Hampshire Council of Governments that's not doing this kind of regional approach. Of, do we have the capacity to to look at uh, regionalizing, either outsourcing or insourcing uh, municipal functions? You mean like taking care of mm -hmm. someone else's yeah EOT or whatever for money? Yeah, yeah for money. So, this so what, what is it that we do so well that we would sell it? Well, assessing would be one. Um, I think if we, got, if we got an HR person, maybe that could be one yeah, too. Yeah, that could be another mm -hmm. one. 
finance director could be another. Mm -hmm. That all makes sense to me, especially mm -hmm. if like yeah. small towns like Hatfield didn't want to have one, for example. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we could help on. Yeah. yeah. So Hatfield and I are talking about some sort of collaboration, col collaboration having to do with IT. So this is very nebulous kinds of discussions, but that kind of outreach. Well, and that's, you know, that's really important because, I mean, when I think of IT, I think of situations like UMass, where they have an IT department that takes care of thousands of computers, right, right. where we're so small, I mean, how many computers are we actually talking about? Not more than 50, probably. Not counting the school, you're probably right. Um, so one IT situation could easily handle Hadley and Hatfield and maybe Sunderland and maybe Deerfield. <laughs> so, I mean, it sounds like there's some juice uh, with, with this idea. How many, can I just ask how many people, town employees, need new computers? Like, are they all outdated here? Uh, That's what I hear. Yeah, they're, they're, they're getting kind of creaky. And there was even some talk of raiding my closet. <laughs> yeah. well, not just that. I mean, here's an example. I mean, we, about storing information, too. Right. All that information, we talked about the big scanner that, what's the planning board wanted, I think yep. it was. Right. But all the departments, a lot of them need um, some type of scanning or electronic. Uh, in the CPA meeting that I was at the other night, uh, we uh, changed, uh, they switched over to the chairperson. All right, so Edwin is going to not be the chair, and they're going to have Andy as the chair. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to take all the filing cabinets that's at Edwin's house yeah. and move them to Andy's house. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, wouldn't that be much easier if it was all in the well, Why computer? are the filing cabinets in anyone's house? Yeah. For one, shouldn't they be in this building somewhere? But yeah. what I'm saying is... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this a lot of la 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 kind of thing right now. Why yeah. is that? The, that is odd. Yeah, they should not be at somebody's house. So, They're public I mean, knowledge. They should be where pe you know they are, right? Yes, it's, yes. <laughs> so it should be in this building. Yes. Wow. Yes. You gonna make a call about uh, that? So yes. when they move them, get them to move them here, <laughs> or some other agreed I'll upon be, location, but not in someone's home. I hope someone's not watching me. Oops. <laughs> 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 You're All in right. trouble now. I guess so. Oh my goodness! I was just saying. You're I thought it trouble. would be much easier if we just put it on the computer. But I figured uh, other well, departments had the same issue. Well, you're you're right. I mean, it could should be on the computer, and the Commonwealth is pushing towns to get more and more things up on the computer. Mm -hmm. But I figured that's just one committee. How about the others? What do all the other committees do? What did, where does CPA keep their paperwork? Well, I think this all feeds into the, the IT I just told discussion, yeah. which okay. we have rated CPA? one. Yeah. You were talking about? In somebody's basement. <laughs> yeah. I, I got in, I got into I got into a big fight with the cultural council because somebody was keeping all the records off site. So, yeah. Because if somebody did, did they learn needs, anything from Hillary Clinton? <laughs> Let's move on. I have I have another so, uh, separate does, item of business that I need you all to take care of. Okay. Try to be quick then. Um, so does HCOG and that discussion about around regionalizing and you know. County or no county in the state of Wisconsin, does that all kind of go into this line of opportunities for consolidation slash outsourcing? Because yes. I don't see that. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I rate this fairly high. Mm -hmm. Then one through five, what are we feeling? Two. I like that. Yeah, two. Okay. So removal of operational log jams. Is this just in terms of departmental efficiencies and policy and procedure and then it also comes back to uh, the, the horizontal nature of your organization and the kind of the, the right. impediments to getting things done and getting decisions and uh, that can stick mm -hmm. so we've had a number of number of, of things not happen okay so you make a request for funding through CPA and it doesn't happen uh, you try to sell a building and it doesn't happen uh, you try to build a fire substation and look at what's happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, this speaks to uh, multiple parties having inf input into a project in such a way that all you need is a little bit of ne negative legislative effort and nothing gets done. 
or that thing doesn't get done. So I so. see this as actually pretty low on the priority list, mm -hmm. just because rather than chasing down individual instances of log jams, I want to be having the conversation from the top down about restructuring to make sure these don't happen. Well, I think that I would make it low too, because if you fix this, that won't happen. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Fix that, the that, other one goes that, away. It yeah. goes away. Exactly. So that's so four five. or five. Five. Yeah. Cool. Five. I think it's our first five. And inspections. What's the story on ex inspections? We have. Uh, this is something that the fire chief has brought, brought up, and uh, that he doesn't have the personnel or the time to cover all the inspections. We have a vibrant commercial. Uh, um, sector we have uh, inspections that are required by law uh, and are we covering all of these bases this is a life safety issue and we may be exposing ourselves to it's also a revenue thing right because he collects money for that revenue thing but it's also a liability issue that if we're not doing life safety uh, inspections and something happens then that could be a real problem for the town so is him hiring more firemen fix this problem that would hopefully happen, yes. Okay, so this is really part of public safety. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because if he gets his fireman, then this goes away. So mm -hmm. similar, I think it's a lower priority because we should address the structure, not the individual instances. Yes. I thought he said he 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 does well on the inspections with his two, with himself, and we're talking about the fire department, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Well, just as one example, okay, so at, in December, November, December every year, anybody who's got a liquor license has got to be inspected jointly by the chief, uh, by fire personnel and the building inspector for life safety issues having to do with cooking equipment and ex exits and all these different things, nightclub issues. Um, if somebody's toned out, and nobody's responding to a fire, then that fire personnel has to leave that inspection, oh, right. and it's undone. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that's that's kind of what we're talking about. Is so, it? how do you fix that problem? You hire more people. More staff. Yeah. Or like, do you hire a retired fireman who just does inspections? Well, that's possible. You know, so that's one well, thing. Can, that's could you? I mean, we have on call. People can they do it? Shared yeah. services. You also need. Yeah, you've been talking about. You that also a lot. need mm -hmm. the, the specific training. I mean, okay, so That's why I said a retired fireman yes, who so. would, doesn't want to run around in buildings that are burning down, but yeah, may not. I think that's why it's on the list is because this is a this is a service that we need to be providing. Them. Could we use the we could step up the training. senior tax rebate? program to get someone to do inspections? That's a possibility. I hadn't thought of that. So did the fire chief acknowledge this issue and work that into his four person, you know, hiring increase that he was asking for? Yes. Okay. So I'm confident that if the fire chief has already taken this issue seriously and worked it into his four person, then that's what we should be focusing on as the staff. Same not, thing, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the logistics of inspections. Okay, so that's a five for that one. I agree. Okay, so that's this list. We're done. Bell Assessor. Oh. Last one. Oh, um, there's nothing there. Just list assessor. It was a category, but not a, an item, so I guess yeah. we just take it as an item in itself. Yeah, that was going, going back to the assessors as a possible resource that we can offer to other towns. Oh, so that's oh. still part of yeah. that's still uh, outsourcing. Outsourcing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So null or two? Where null, I would think. Null. 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 Okay. You had some things on the list that we haven't even come to yet for tonight. Yes. Uh, in terms of other business? Well, you have, what's, what do you have? Can I see that list? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so just to wrap up, I will consolidate this, send it out to everybody in the digital form, and then we'll have it ready, and I can pass it along to select board and yourself. Yep. With a small little preamble about our thinking behind this is weightiness, just the reserve not timeliness. So, the 50,000. Thank you, guys. Thanks. So you're talking about the reserve fund transfer? Request. Yes, please. So we have a snow and ice deficit of $10,733.68. Uh, and we've requested a transfer from the reserve of that amount. Here's the snow and ice budget. Do you have more than one copy? Or this is the one copy that I have right now. I can run down and make more. No, it's okay. 
No, and not. you have, t have a reserve $50,000. You've taken 7675 out, leaving 42325 remaining. This is in the... This is in your reserve account. In our board's Seven. reserve. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, so you're asking for this $10,733 so they can pay the bill that they already have. That's right. Hmm. Just so I remember... Did we vote to keep fifty thousand for next fiscal year in our reserves, or did we? It's already down to forty-two. <laughs> no, that's for this year. You got forty-two. No, we voted to keep the fifty. Yeah, we yeah, voted. This was what we get. Yeah, we you have fifty for, for yeah. eighteen. Okay. okay. Can I ask you, as long as we need? Sure. It's kind of like a done deal. You just need to. We just need to vote it. Yeah. Right. So, have our numbers increased or decreased as far the as the outcome? Get the vote first. June 17, you know, the 2017 money's coming back from. Oh, I see. So, what kind of free cash are we talking about? Well, yeah. hang on. Can we finish this first? So. Sure. I am actually wondering on the year over year figures on our how much we go over for snow and ice removal, if you have them off the top of your head. Uh, is this like high or low in terms of what we're This is very to? low compared very low. to the other And years. last year it was, we didn't even go over the year before, right? No, he was asking no. the question: Is this typical? Every year we come back and get another ten thousand, or is it not typical? No, this is not typical. Not this typical. is this this overage is low compared to other so years. So usually we have to pay more overage. Yes. So yes. that means the original budget is wrong. Right, and mm -hmm. that's the reason why we asked for an increase. But you don't know based on your winters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What? Well, but I mean, if year over year you're falling short, then your budget's wrong. Right. Yeah, but I didn't think that we were short last year for snow and ice. I can't remember last I year. I mean, but 16, right? Well, 16, you were definitely over because we had a hell of a winter. Okay. I trust we looked at the numbers. And I'm just trying to think I just wanted a quick So we need a motion to approve this. I motion to approve the transfer. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. There was so one just, year we didn't have a lot of... So snow at all when we didn't transfer i thought that was two years ago i could be wrong yeah there, um, the years blend together i mean there was that one year when it just snowed and kept on snowing and yeah that <laughs> must have been a catastrophe yeah, that year we, we were not in good shape for that one Where Where logistics sign oh yeah i was just wondering if someone says a chair sign oh you put I mean, uh, four to four both four, two. four zero and one not right. here right if you, if we voted right. four to zero mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but one of us is not here we yeah, put four zero Zero. Zero? Yep. Okay. That way okay. you indicate right. that only four people were there. Right here? Just curious, is it uh, when there's co chairs, do they both have to sign or does only one have to sign? Well, they're both here so they can both, both sign. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> as long as it. I just want to make sure if you know we can if one of you doesn't show up to the meeting but we still have a quorum if we can actually do stuff like There's that. a good point. Right. It's a good point and what we would do is we would just uh, fold into the motion the authorization that you or you sign on behalf of the entire uh, finance committee. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd name you specifically. Well and the way it usually works is we well I suppose if one of you were missing we would still have the three of us but yeah. so one of you would have to be here. In any case, yeah, it's always wondering because if you both were gone, we would never or something like that. Right. That's all. Can I ask all of you? Are you familiar with? Are you comfortable with the open meeting laws? Are you knowledgeable of them and what you can and can't do and so forth? Well, usually we do everything right here, and that satisfies the open meeting law. Okay, so I just I, I was going to ask you if you could send out the open meeting laws to all of us, sure. and we can look at that again. Yeah. And I think each department. I can't say for other departments, but I think they all need to look at that again and make sure that we all have an understanding of what it is we can and we can't do, mm -hmm. and including even emails because we're all grouped in emails. Yeah, you can't chat by email. You can't chat by email. The lesson so. about re lemon bar recipes. Yes, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> or scheduling. Or David. Or, or <laughs> scheduling or something. You could send it all to me for right. the purposes of preparing information for uh, your work, but. We can't have a conversation by email this way. Correct. So that means we re literally have to do everything at this table that we do. Even through our uh, FinCom emails? Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Since that, but that's open to the public and everything. We still couldn't one-on-one. -on -one. 
Like if Tom and I were having a conversation outside here and one of you showed up and there's a three, we can't do that. You can talk about baseball. Right. You can talk about Red Sox. Any, anything not related to Hadley Finances. The, the reason why, even though your your email is, is perhaps more open, is that you haven't provided people with notice that you're going to be doing this, yeah. having this conversation. So nice. you've got to give people notice so that they can either watch or show up. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we have, I, I've been working with the planning board on their scanner. Um, oh, yeah. They may defer that until the fall and bring it up as a capital item. So whether I see that or not, I don't know. I uh, was talking to the accountant just uh, two days ago about, okay, so we're getting close to the end of the fiscal year. We should be able to see the budgets that are running over. There's small overages at this point. Okay, so the property insurance is over by a couple hundred dollars. So, uh, so there's going to be. I'm going to come back to you and then request further transfers. But I'm not seeing anything big out there at this point. So we're not going to have a big, mm -hmm. big flood into free cash of returning monies. Well, I think I think the five hundred thousand dollars that I estimated back in January still stands right now. And knock on wood um, but uh, and that was one of the things that we talked about is there anything in our numbers that says whoops we overshot or undershot you know so I'm still comfortable with the five hundred thousand. and when we will know like uh, when will the books all close so you'll know what we have back June 30th. so June June 30th is the last day to get in revenues mm -hmm. Uh, July 19th is the last warrant, so everything has to be in by, everything for FY17 has to be in by July 18th in order to be put onto the last warrant for the 19th. Once the 19th has come and gone, then we should be wrapping up the uh, end of year everything. Um, and so sometime around mid-August, we should be getting our free cash certified at that point. Okay, and then we can take care of things that need to be taken care of at that point? No, we gotta, we got to take care of everything for FY17. We have to get that done by the 18th of July. That's our drop If we down. don't know what the free cash is, how are we going to do that? Uh, the, so we would, yes, I'm sorry, I misunderstood your question. So the uh, free cash would be used in the fall in order to finish our work on the budget. Right. Yeah. And we'll give to the people that we had decided if we have enough in the funding. Yeah, so the OPEB that we cut back mm -hmm. on. All right, we should refill that. the OPEB. Yeah. And uh, town employee raises. Mm -hmm. Right before we finish, um, can we quickly just talk about the um, liaisons? I know that. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask David another question. I mm -hmm. you I understand that you have your um, meetings at eleven o'clock. Department head meetings. Yes, yes, and I'd like to attend one of those. Sure. But I'm wanting to know if you can move it to a later time. Sure. Is that possible? How, how later are we talking about? Well, most people end their job at three between three and four. So how long do your meetings typically last? Typically last an hour. Okay. So is there any way you can do a two o'clock? Uh, sh yeah, I can explore that. One, one or, yeah, let's say one or two o'clock. All right. That way I can attend those. Sure. Which ones are these, Terry? The, the department heads. Department head meetings? Yes. Thanks. So There's then. No way I could ever get in the middle of the day like that. Well. I can do it, but I want with my work schedule. I want it to not at eleven dead middle of my day. Right, you want it at the end of your regular day. Oh. Right, I'm either going to take the afternoon off. All right, so, I, know, so, so I'll look everybody. into this. I can't promise it right now because I'm they don't have to change for every time. Okay. Just you know, a couple. Just the times when you're coming in. Well, I'll work with you. I like that. to attend them. Yeah. So you want to talk about liaisons? Yeah, I mean, because she's doing meetings and like just so we can 
and a lot of it will stem back to some of this, so we'll keep start getting emails yeah. and mm -hmm. get it out there. I thought I was the DPW liaison. I thought that would be great, but right. I don't think we ever put it down. Okay, so put that down, and then so I was send do an email to Marlo. Okay, uh, school. Also, Dave, can you find? I guess obviously I'm missing another page. I could page, do public so safety. Send me that some of it already. Article yeah. line section six. Public safety. Six, yeah. Since I'm yeah. doing the ambulance, yeah, some of it already. I'm not targeting any department. Seems like just something that you like to do. I'm yeah. trying to make everything consistent. Although I do want to go see the chair. Oh, yeah, anytime. I would so just go make an appointment and see him anytime. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't stop other that. Okay. Departments. Okay. Okay. Yeah, plan. Right. So it's not pointing fingers at anybody. Sure. It's just making sure that things are done correctly. Okay. Uh, anything else that yeah, needs I'm to be sure attended to that I, we're not doing? The, um, Terry, or, um, Valerie asked to be on to anything to do with the senior center, the she senior did. part. So that did would I be human services. Short? So human services would be uh, sure senior that. center, uh, the Oliver Smith the Will, is, the veterans services. Human services, okay. Yeah. Then in two or three Valerie. years, they're going to come Valerie. back and say, we remove all the sprues. Um, is there any ones that we're missing? What are we missing? Parks and Rec's That would be culture and recreation, so that would be library, historic commission, yeah, no, park and rec. Barn door is closed okay. and the animals are so out. library. <laughs> I want to volunteer, Terry, which you seem pretty passionate. We're talking about uh, Parks and Rec. And, um, I could do Park and Rec, too, if you want. Like, yeah. Park and Rec, park rec. Park, you, You've so. done the commissioner part. That's okay. right. So just the taxonomy that I'm using is the same as for the budget. So I'm thinking 100 series, 200 series, etc. You don't have to do it that way. So when I say part culture and recreation, I'm thinking about the, uh, what is it, the 600 series budgets. Okay. Uh, and what's that include again? So it's Parks and Rec. Park and Rec. Library. Library. Historic Commission. Are Historic. The 600s. Anything else we're missing then? Through the liaisons? I, I don't know. Is there? So, what do you got in the. So I, I got school, DPW, public safety, um, uh, capital planning, uh, human services, cultural. Um, I'm on CPA. Mm -hmm. that sounds, sounds like a good start. All right, we can find out when their, their meetings are yeah. on the town calendar. I think human well, services like, also yeah, includes like HPAD. Heather to find out where, because okay. there's nothing for the school committee this month. Um, that might be, that, 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 that might. June off the you, graduation. Um, yeah. HPAC. Well, they have a lot of things to do. Can we separate that one? Because I don't sure. think that's something that Valerie would be interested sure. in. All from, uh, so who wants to do TV? Hadley yeah, Media? Do, Hadley Media. Yeah. yeah. And her. Her grandfather. Yeah. <laughs> well, we already figured all yeah. IT yeah. is going and your direction. <laughs> I, I had a meeting with the, um, the Massachusetts Film Office. Uh, so they do, did a presentation Julie about uh, uh, promoting now, the so film in yeah. and Western Massachusetts mm. in particular. And they're very much interested yeah. in Hadley Where because of the, she moved in with the, the, the movie that was done next door uh, about they the biopic uh, about uh, Emily Dickinson yeah, called A Quiet Passion, which is coming up pretty soon. And I said, you know, is there some opportunity to tie in to the public access? TV stations that a lot of these towns have she and she said oh sure so it could be oh, that we could get some it. really interesting interesting uh, yeah. Yeah. so so now that I have everyone written down is this something I could send to you and, and we could get or maybe when a uh, department head meeting get our names out or so how, sure. how are we going to communicate this to these people so that they put us on the list so, well first up how many of these are actual seats on any committees I understand the JCPC is um, but are there any other committees a school committee You're that's not a that. seat he's not on the committee school on the committee, committee. Well, he's just going that's to an elected position yeah. too right. I'm right. just I'm the representative of the finance committee and I will go yeah. to all the meetings and okay yeah so, and, okay, so this is and I'm sure they'll feel like they then, that's actually a seat. want my support, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Is there anything besides uh, capital planning that's actually a seat officially in any way? 
just the CPA. No, CPA. Mm. Yeah, and CPAs CPA. would be, a, be the only one that I can think of. Okay. So, sorry. Like, like yeah. the public safety, there's no C or right. anything like that. Yeah. Right. You're so, just going through getting, getting the word out, what I do is I prepare a memo to all the departments with the liaisons for the select board. I'll simply rework that and uh, get that out to and all add the our names to the various things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you okay. use that list then? I'll send, yeah, I'll send you that tomorrow. Send it to me by email, that'd be mm -hmm. fine. All right. Are we all good then? Yeah. That was so actually pretty easy. So that just worked looking out for pretty the well, especially since you took out the school. Next meeting and agenda. <laughs> Why nobody wanted the school? No. Nope. No. Nope. Why? <laughs> it's difficult. That's the major budget. That's so just so we can think ahead for next uh, meeting's agenda, so I think it would be worthwhile to go through the, the other list of what we would like to prioritize in terms of the timing and where we should focus our efforts. Okay. Um, and then as a part of that, sorry, after that, is there anything that we can identify right now would be very worthwhile to have on our next agenda? Well, then we want to invite, priorities? didn't you want to invite people in for next next time? Yeah, um, We wanted to invite in, which I can, now my head is starting to spin uh, around. Capital. I don't necessarily know if we need these right away. We talked about OPEC Joe Shea. And Joe Shea, but that's not something that we needed. No. That's, He's coming next week and he'll give oh. a presentation to the select board, which... Well, maybe we'll just listen to that. Yeah. I, think, I think that would be very helpful if you yeah. did. So, yeah, if there's anyone we want to invite, essentially what's pressing now that we should put on our agenda for next meeting? Um, My head's going around. I mean, the capital, I think, is interesting, and I think we should invite them, but I don't necessarily... We're, whichever one they could make, right? Sure. So it depends on their um, do we want to have but do we want to have a s override options sit down with someone who would be a good person to well that's going to be part of the broader I'm sure the select board wants yeah. to we talk about a tri board meeting the, for that. I'm, the, trying, the, I'm trying to set that up for the 21st to have Terry Williams the problem with the department the select right board is everything seems to get glossed over very quickly mm -hmm. and it's like it's not substantive well, maybe we want to focus on long-term um, you know, strategic me, plan start. If you're going to talk about override options, that yeah. should take a person like a PowerPoint and at least an hour and a half. Yeah. Not so oh. I think we do it for the 21st with the tri board. We meet on the 22nd, so if we're unhappy with how thorough it was, then we can we say for the 6th of July. Let's try to get or or whenever he can. Yeah. Right. Or if he just provides more materials and we talk about it, something like that, we'll decide. So I think that makes sense. Right. And there's a very good manual provided the Department of Revenue on the mass.gov website having to do with uh, overrides and it's written for people to use. It's kind of like a guidebook and there are many different kinds of overrides, uh, straight override, debt exclusions, capital exclusions, pyramid, mer uh, menu forms, so different ways of putting, slicing and dicing this and making it mm -hmm. do what you need it to do. So uh, can I ask you a question sure. based on that? So we always talk about override, but doesn't the mill tax mill rate get adjusted every year? Yes. And so if that well, goes... It, it gets adjusted by the decisions that you make about um, budgets coupled with money that comes in that you can use to offset the mill rate and then changes in value so the, uh, of the property. Right, but so but but it fluctuates. Yes. So why couldn't it fluctuate to cover new firemen? Because you have a proposition two and a half cap that you cannot exceed, and we're right up at that that levy limit. Oh, so you're, we're already at our two and a half. You're at your two and a half all the time. So that's the reason why, that's the reason why we spend so much time making the budget balance, because you have, not. You don't have excess capacity within your levy limit to raise the additional money for the. All right, so that mill rate fluctuating is stuck at can't go higher than two and a half percent of the total. Plus, plus new growth, plus um, debt exclusions for prior years. Okay, so firemen don't fit in any of those categories. Not. So every budget goes up by two and a half percent. That's not what I saw in the. Budget book. Right, so remember that the proposition two and a half means that your tax 
levy goes up by two and a half, but then you can add the value of the new growth, all the new construction. Mm -hmm. Plus, if you've uh, made the, any decisions about prior debt and excluded that debt from the limits of proposition two and a half, that gets added too. So your your tax revenue has increased by about four percent in this budget because it's not just the two and a half percent, and then that's it. It's two and a half plus new growth plus these other other things. But in, in all the different line items, I didn't see a 4% increase Correct. in nearly any of them. So right. where where is that money going? Well, I mean, the, the whole budget overall went up by the same, uh, by about, what was it, 3%. Um, but that includes the 4% increase uh, in taxes. Okay. All right, so I think maybe we don't have to prioritize anything for next time. I think we'll have plenty to talk about in terms of this list again, but what we're going to work on. Okay. And then obviously other edge come up. And whatever you meeting. have. Yep. And you're not going to be at the next meeting. I will be at the next meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So just the July ones that I'm not going to be at. Okay. You are allowed to take time off. I am allowed to take time off. I, <laughs> How yeah, many I vacation think. weeks do you I get? I motion to adjourn. I second. Favor. Aye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.